Warning, the following episode was originally meant to be released on Saturday. I'm sorry for the delay because we had some minor setbacks, but every Saturday there will be no more delays. Every Saturday there will be a new episode of the Anime Comic Show. Hope you enjoy the first episode. Hello everyone, it's me again. Yes, that's right, I'm back. Your number one favorite, your greatest, your number one greatest YouTuber of all time. Hello and welcome to whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever time it is. Yes, I know, I've been gone for quite a while. And believe me, I'm really sorry about that. I, I genuinely am. But it's okay now because i am back and this time i'm bringing some new changes recently i've asked everyone if they would like me to see, do more versus edits or edits or just comic and figure reviews and the second one was the most popular choice so here i am introducing myself for the first time as x rod hosting the show the anime comic show a show where we look at all animes and comic books both good and bad. Mind you, we do... We'll have a look at, like, stuff like some cartoons and all that kind of stuff. As well as manga. But mostly anime and comics. Cue the intro! starts with me like doing a brief introduction about like today's topic and my thoughts on it and then after the intro is played we get a quick look at the cover or the opening of something and then we just get right into the review then i get my thoughts on it like i tell the story what's happening and as i do i like get make out certain points or get my thoughts on it and then by the end of it i, I like do a review of whether or not it's actually good or bad like most critics and reviewers would do so, yeah. Then, we have only been here for like a few minutes, so we really can't just end off here. Now, well, I'm going to introduce to you my look, and then we'll get into the first review of the show. <laughs> yeah, here's my official look. I, the shirt is going to change, obviously. But, like, this look, like, swear, the headphones, sunglasses... This is not going to change. Let's get into it right now. So this being the first episode of the whole show, I thought it might be a good idea to actually look at something good, something decent, something great. And to do that, I have decided to choose one of three of my favorite Batman stories of all time. That with art done by the very famous Alex Ross and written by Aldini, this is Batman War on Crime. Our cover art is decent. It just it just doesn't really show much of what's happening other than showing Batman just looking at us coldly and scaringly with his cape wrapped around him and a light shining on him with his pointy ear cow just barely being seen through the shadows. We open high above Gotham in the shadows, watching atop a gargoyle. Batman watches as bats fly across. Wait, so does that mean he's gonna get rabies? No, don't tell me he's gonna get rabies. Alfred, call the guy! I'm gonna get rabies! Ow, 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 ow! I am the Batman, a grim soul fighting a relentless war on crime. Cloaked in shadows, I prey on the forces of evil. So Batman is really the spirit of vengeance? Determined to strike terror throughout the underworld. I adopted the fearsome image of a bat. To prepare myself for the battle, I developed my mind mastering science and criminology. 
I pushed myself to the limits of human endurance, training my body to physical perfection, all the while driven by the pain of my worst memory. And then I had a criminal step from the shadows and tore my world apart. Wait, so does this mean the criminal was basically a god? In a heartbeat, I had lost the two most important people in my life. It was a loss that changed me forever. The night a grief-stricken boy made a solemn oath he would never forget. He would never forget about the night. Uh, yeah, I really can't think of a joke to, about, to say about that. I buried my parents here when I was eight. Since that day, part of me has always been bound to this place, to the memories of innocent people destroyed by crime, ghosts long departed, and ghosts who still wait. Does this mean Timothy the Ghost Train's waiting in Gotham? Because I can call up the Ghostbusters and Thomas if you want me to. To much of the city, I'm a ghost, an urban boogeyman, often discussed by rarely seen, more vivid and rumored than reality. Glimpsed fleetingly in shadow, possessed of seemingly inhuman powers, I've become, through imaginations and nightmares, a creature to be avoided. The aura of fear I project is my most potent weapon. It triggers panic, giving me the advantage in my attack. It acts as a barrier, warning the innocent and curious to keep their distance. Even those who fixate on challenging the Batman recall in horror when I finally confront them. Each night in silence, I move through the city, seeing what others try to hide. The bribes casually taken, the small details overlooked, the many accounts of crime caused by rock and roll, the massacre and pain caused by one face. But crime also flourishes in the luster of wealth and civility. Here I wear a different disguise, one in which the city's fortune welcome me as one of their own. The well-heeled ensigns of this realm are often just as cutthroat as their counterparts in the street. As Bruce Wayne, I weave through the crowd, giving a smile here, a handshake there, every move executed with the same precision Batman would use to disarm a thug in an alley. This is the world into which I was born. Over the years, I have shut out any distractions might offer, using it purely as a source of information and arrain it to develop a context that will help me win battles elsewhere. Yet sometimes I reflect on the positive elements I might have embraced from that life. Stability, security, family, basic but precious things my neighbors take for granted. I have sacrificed much to operate as Batman. My wealth buys me privacy crucial to the survival of my identities. What kind of man would I have become if things had been different? Instead of using my fortune as a means to fight crime, I allow myself to be ruled by it and all its temptations, if I truly became what I appear to be to others. Anyways, Bruce goes off to some kind of corporate meeting to whether or not they should actually go through with the plans of building upscale housing over the former base side that is in Gotham. Bruce knows he's been there because he's been down there as Batman. In doing so, he meets Randall Winters, who tempts him on it, and Bruce says... He'll consider it, though secretly he does not want to. Later that night, as night falls over Gotham, Batman goes out to the streets in full costume and then stops a mugger who's trying to rob a shop. Batman apprehends the mugger and rushes inside of the shop, but is too late and finds a boy named Marcus who had witnessed the death of his parents, and Batman can only say he sees himself in that boy. Just a reflection. Just like what he went through. And fears that as the police take him away, provide him with like counseling, food, shelter, that will have little impact on Marcus's life. Whether the scars are physical or mental, crime wounds everyone it touches. It brings injury and death, poisons the mind and soul, and in the end leaves only despair. Crime wastes no time extending its reach. By morning, a gang is already tagging the murdered couple store cloaked in a humble disguise to watch the punks claim the area for their own. My God. They're praying to bring demons into Gotham! Anyways, Bruce goes into an old cafe, orders some soup, and notices a woman who has just gotten out of crime, is still trying to adjust to her new life, and knows that the memories will not go away. Later that night, Batman makes his way out back to Bayside, and then after has a small old group of thugs, so surprising to him, one of the thugs was Marcus. And he escapes, and Batman lets him go. After a brief workout in the Batcave and some rest, Bruce figures it's time to make some changes, and sometime later, 
He is meeting with Randall Winters. He wishes to actually pummel the man. Because he really does not give a damn for the poor. Even while he's just smiling in that evil, almost menacing looking smile. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Even not as Batman, Bruce Wayne, if he pulls his cards right, he can be a little bit scary. Mm. Anyways, Batman that makes his way over to a party who tries to say that Bayside's on his and it's a lost cause. Though Batman says that if he disappears, so does his liquor store. And then, as expected, the guy is Batman every single detail. And then we go to a montage of Batman apprehending the bad guys. And, of course, the criminal underworld noting Batman's presence. Next night, Batman makes his way back to Bayside and discovers the secret hideout of the drug dealers. He goes in, in full power, knocking them out using Batarang's gadgets and smoke pallets to disarm the bad guys, but then stops in his assault when he sees Marcus holding the gun. And then we get one of the most beautiful moments in this entire story. And seriously, this is a very touching moment. Marcus, this isn't you. At least it doesn't have to be. I saw what happened to your parents. I know what you're feeling. A man with a gun once took away people I loved. I never stopped missing them. Never forgot how that how painful it was to be alone. You can't bring your parents back. But you can break the cycle of violence that took them. Don't be part of it, Marcus. Don't become what killed our families. Another beautiful part of this entire story. This is a reason why Batman does not kill. So that no other person has to be like him, and so he can inspire others to be better. And I just want to clarify in that moment, that wasn't Batman who was talking. That wasn't Batman, I'm Batman, my parents are going to be away from me. No, that was Bruce Wayne talking. That was Bruce Wayne talking, not Batman. And honestly, <laughs> I was touched by this. This was... I was amazed at how well done this was. This was absolutely freaking fantastic. Anyways, Bruce Wayne makes plans to restore or Bayside to its former glory, and then pays a visit to Randall Winters, having exposed him to crime to the police. He wished him good luck on his so-called endeavors as the police arrive and Bruce leaves. And so our comic ends with Batman on the Gotham City Bridge, Looking out towards the city, thinking, in the shadows. I help Marcus deal with his pain. It will take him some time, but I know we'll eventually leave him. Maybe someday I'll feel I can leave mine behind as well. But for now, I still wait. This storyline was great, and it was absolutely fantastic. And it was a great way to start off the show. But in all honesty, I have no major complaints with this comic, and I cannot tell you how good this was far enough, is highly recommended. If you're looking for a good place to start reading Batman comics, Batman War and Crime is highly recommended. Next week, however, I want to look at something more underrated and something that's not part of the big two, that being Marvel or DC. Next week, we look at Transformers Infiltration. But until then, I really hope you enjoyed the first episode of the Anime Comic Show. And it's your boy, X-Rod Studios 2005, signing off. Good night! <laughs>